memorable hour in the history of democracy begins as the foreign ministers of 12 Western nations enter the departmental auditorium in Washington to sign the Atlantic Pact. In this hall, where less than a decade ago drawings for the draft took place, a momentous step is taken toward peace. Joining in a united front from the Tropic of Cancer to the North Pole, the Atlantic democracies pledge themselves to a 14-point mutual assistance pact in case of attack on any one of them. To the dramatic ceremonies comes President Truman, who must win Senate ratification for the treaty. In words heard around the world, the President brings home the significance of the historic pact. It is a simple document, but it, if, it, if it had have existed in 1914, and in 1939, supported by the nations who are represented here today, I believe it would have prevented the acts of aggression which led to two world wars. In this path, we hope to create a shield against aggression and the fear of aggression, a bulwark which will permit us to get on with the real business of government and society, the business of achieving a fuller and happier life for all our citizens. First to sign the treaty, democracy's answer to aggression from any quarter, is Paul Henri Spack, Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs for Belgium. For Canada, Lester B. Pearson. Each foreign minister is accompanied by his nation's ambassador to the US. For Denmark, Gustav Rasmussen. For France, Robert Schumann. For Iceland, Bjarna Benediktsson. For Italy, Count Carlo Sforza. For Luxembourg, Joseph Besch. For the Netherlands, D.U. Sticker. For Norway, Halvard Lange. For Portugal, Jose Cairo de Mata. For the United Kingdom, the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, Ernest Bevan. President Truman brings Vice President Barclay onto the dais. They see the Secretary of State, Dean Acheson, sign the Atlantic Pact, a statement of the lessons of history as the United States strengthens its leadership among the world's democracies.